Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Unlawful Exile, half of the pair of exiles, and welcome to this trailer analysis for the new Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire trailer. That was just released, I think it was released today for most dates. It was after midnight, I think. So that'll be the 4th of September, possibly the 3rd of September. I'm going to be doing a full-on trailer analysis. I won't show the trailer in this video, but I will be showing screenshots from the trailer. So if you want to watch the trailer along with me, I'll try and stick to the order of it as best as I can. So if you want to watch it along. But obviously this is going to be longer than the trailer because I'm going to be talking about stuff. But I have got screenshots from it. So yeah, there's that. So let's, without further ado, get started. First thing on my notes is we have Dive. They showed what Dive looks like. And as you can see, your character is underwater. The underwater looks a lot more, a lot more detailed. They've done a deep blue thing just in the middle to probably save on render distance. But you can also see Corsola swimming in the background there. And that makes me wonder whether that's just something that happens when you go through that route. Or maybe rather than just finding the Pokemon randomly underwater, you actually swim into their physical beings. And there's a hint of, there's a hint of finding wild Pokemon in their actual physical beings rather than just random encounters later on in the trailer as well but that's not till much later that's right at the end but that could be a thing right there so rather than just finding that Corsola say in a patch of underwater grass you could see the physical Corsola and swim into it and get it and try and catch it that way I would really enjoy that to like see this big ass waylord flying over maybe and you gotta swim up to it all epic like it's huge I think that'd be cool we can also see that the Pokemon your trainer is sitting upon is a Whalmer. Now, I feel like it'd be weird, because obviously there's more than one Pokemon that can learn Dive. We all know this, there's plenty of Pokemon that can learn Dive, plenty of Pokemon that you can have at this point that ha can learn the HM for Dive. I think it would be weird if you had, for an example, a Huntail. I know for a fact Huntail can learn Dive. If you had Huntail at this point and it used Dive, I think it'd be weird if it turned into a Whalmer. So I'm thinking maybe, just maybe, I might be shooting for something a bit too optimistic here, but maybe you actually ride on the Pokemon you use Dive for. Maybe they finally cracked that code. I think it'd be very odd to be, like, going for a dive on Azumarill and it turn into a Whalmer. I feel like that would throw a lot of people off. We can also see that your character's wearing a Snorkel finally, so it actually makes a bit of goddamn sense now how you're surviving underwater for so long, rather than just your Pokemon giving you some kind of horrible bestiality like mouth to mouth kind of thing as you're swimming along. The next thing I wanted to talk about was the desert region that was shown as well. As you can see the desert is a lot more, there's a lot more hills on it now. Uh, there's a rock over to the left hand side when you're standing on top of one of the hills. I doubt that's going to be a, ra uh, a rock smash rock but hey you never know. What I'm most interested in for this screenshot, because you might be thinking, oh, what are you showing this? It's just the desert. It's just sand and hills. There is a patch of light sand in the top corner. Now, this could be... I don't know. This is... That's why I don't know. It could easily be something like... That's where the wild Pokemon are. But then if you watch later on in the trailer, this character, or whoever's playing this game finds a trap inch on top of this hill. So it's not that the wild Pokemon are only in the lighter sand. Perhaps the lighter sand are safe areas where there are no Pokemon. Or maybe they're the quicksand areas from before where you have to keep wiggling yourself out. I don't know. Personally, I hope it's something along the lines of that's where you find maybe rarer Pokemon perhaps. Or I don't know. But I think it, I, I'm thinking it might be the quicksand now thinking about it because I didn't think about that before I think that might be the quicksand so that when you step in it you have to kind of wriggle yourself free kind of thing but that's just something I wanted to show off there very very quickly so next thing I have on my list are the new trainer sprites so let me find the picture for that there we go the new trainer sprites so it's showing a youngster I assume it could be a youngster he has one Pokemon it was shown at the start of the video he does have a level 10 Ralts in the trailer. So I'm assuming it's a youngster. And this basically confirms that they're going to be all new trainer sprites for all new trainers. So it's going to be a new swimmer. There's going to be a new fisherman. New Pokemaniac. New blah 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 everything. Uh, obviously new backdrop for the animation. This character looks a lot like Max from the actual anime. Which I think maybe is a shout out to the anime from the game. I don't know. 
but I think he looks pretty cool. What I'm more interested in is when he actually sends out his Pokemon is that is that for number one it's at a bit of a weird angle all right as you can see i've shown a picture of him sending out the rules that i mentioned before and the landscape is going down so you're looking at it from an odd angle for starters i don't know whether they're gonna show the battle from this angle because it's kind of like you're laying on the if you can picture it like this he sent out the pokemon the rules in the air it's almost like you're laying on the grass and looking at it sideways like diagonally up that kind of angle that's just something I always point out. I don't know whether they're going to do the whole battles like that. I hope not, because I think that would be weird and maybe disorientating for people. But it's just an observation. What I was particularly interested in, which I didn't notice until I actually saved the screenshot, was in the background you can actually see a mountain. And that is what I assume is Mount... Oh, I always pronounce it wrong. Mount Pierre? Pyra? P-Y-R-E. The one that you get the cable car up to. That looks like that mountain, and that is pretty freaking amazing. That when you do your battles, they have the actual layout of the region in the background. So like you've got the mountain behind you, because realistically, you would probably be able to see the mountain if you was walking around the routes. It's the biggest mountain in Hoenn. It's the only mountain in Hoenn, but it's the biggest mountain in Hoenn by default. So you would be able to probably see that, especially if this was the... No, I'm getting my roots mixed up, don't worry about that. But yeah, you'd be able to see that. And it's got the smoke coming out of it showing it's a volcano. Could be a cloud, but I think it's the smoke from a volcano. So I thought that was a really, really nice touch from a Pokemon there. That you have things nearby. So maybe now, I don't know, maybe now depending on where you are, like different routes, maybe you'll be able to see things in the background. Maybe if you're near a city, you'll be able to see the city behind you when you're battling. When the camera is panning around to your different Pokemon. Maybe if you're battling on the lake side, you'll be battling actually next to a lake. I just feel like that would be a nice, interesting concept. I feel like that would be quite a nice little detail that they could drop in there that not many people would probably appreciate. Next one I wanted to touch on was the gym leader animations and their battle screens. I'm just going to show the gym leaders real quickly just because I haven't really given my opinion on them. I think they all look amazing. They've all got a lot more personality now. Like, I can see each one, and I can see more character behind them. Like, Roxanne's kind of a newish gym leader. She's kind of like a schoolgirl kind of thing, like boarding school, but she's strict and stuff. You can kind of tell it from her grey outfit. Uh, Brawly's more of a fun-loving kind of guy, but he's still, like, you know, still works hard and tough. Watson is just easygoing. He's wearing a freaking Hawaiian shirt over electric overalls. It's like, come on, how, am, how much more easygoing do you have to go? It's just like, I feel like the, the gym leaders have a bit more depth now. Like, they have a bit more character. And I feel like that was a big complaint from X and Y. Is that so many people said that, Oh, all these gym leaders, I can just forget about them easily. There's only maybe one or two that I remember. Which is true. I, if, there was, if you was going to ask me on the X and Y gym leaders, I'd remember Corinna, because she's the mega evolution one. And I'd remember Valerie, because she had the fairy types. And Viola, just because she was the first one. That's it. And because Viola was in it later on as well. All the other ones I don't really remember at all. I know they were like rock and like uh, grass and stuff. But they didn't do anything. They didn't get your attention. You saw them for maybe 5-10 minutes and then you forgot about them instantly. There was no sort of like... I don't know. There was no developness. De developness? Let's invent that word. There was no developness to their character. They didn't develop the character at all. And I hope that that's what they're taking with this route of the new Jim Lee design. Making them a bit more impactful to your game. Making them actual characters that have like an actual personality. And you will remember them, hopefully. Like, hopefully you will remember them. That is what I want. I want a ca gym character that I see, I talk to, I interact with. And I think, yes, that was a worthwhile interaction for the game. And it really added something to me. But that's not the point of this. That was just my opinion on the gym leaders. That wasn't even. That was just a little screenshot from the trailer. What I do want to show is they showed a example of Brawly when you challenge him, and he has a sort of animation playing behind him. It's all. It's like a. Um, it's like a close combat kind of animation that I picture. There's loads of like car, comic style, like comic ca cartoon anime style of when you punch something and you get the yellow flare kind of thing. 
There's loads of that around. So, number one, they're doing animations for gym leaders, which is awesome. Number two, because this is like an almost animation punching style thing, they're probably gym leader specific, which would be pretty freaking cool. Because you could have Brawly punching stuff, you could have Roxanne, I don't know, like rocks falling behind her, I don't know. Uh, Watson with all kinds of electricity, you could have Tate and Liza doing some kind of psychic mumbo jumbo. I just feel like it'd be awesome and I, I'd really look forward to the Walter one. Because I feel like Walter in games is very much, it's always done really well or really horrible. And I can't imagine Pokemon doing Walter really badly. Like they're normally pretty good at Walter animations and I feel like the backdrop for the Walter Gym, the animation at Sutopolis? Uh, is it Sutopolis? I could be wrong. But yeah, I feel like that would be pretty freaking amazing to watch. So next up on the list and the next thing to happen was they showed a lot of stuff to do with the Team Aqua and Team Magma. And this is the one part where I might be jumping around in the trailer a little bit, so I apologise. But the first thing they showed was the animations for the actual team leaders. The team leaders have animations now. Maxi is standing in what looks to be a eruption. And Archie is standing in what looks to be a waterfall type thing. Now I don't know if this was done just for the trailer to promote the new leaders. Or maybe this is... I don't know, maybe this is like an animation that plays when you battle them for the final time in their strongest form, air quotes, form. Or maybe it's something that plays every time you see them, I don't know. But I feel like, again, it's more character development, it's making them seem more imposing. Like, seeing Maxi standing in an eruption, especially, and Archie standing like with water all around him, and Archie already has like an imposing like figure stance like he's already like come on have a go if you think you're hard enough whereas Maxi's like is a bit more reclusive but Maxi's eruption has a bit more flair to it anyway I feel like this is again I keep coming back to it but character development making the character seem more important making it more this person is really strong like your character be thinking this person is really strong he is a powerful person he has a whole organization and this battle is actually going to mean something it's all trying to, I get the sense that it's trying to make you feel more invested in the story, I suppose. Making you actually feel like, right, this means something. This is important. This is going to be big. Like, this is going to be amazing. And I love it. I just absolutely love it that Pokemon or Game Freak is taking time to make it seem more like everything matters. Everything is important. Everything is crucial. Especially, especially with the two team leaders in this game. They also have a backdrop that appears when they send out a Pokeball. Archie obviously throws his like there's no tomorrow. He just throws it like he's throwing a baseball at Fenway Park. And Max is just like couldn't care less, just flicks it forward. They also have backdrops when they do it like that. Similar thing to when Team Flare had it. But I thought it was quite a interesting thing that they put it in again. I don't know whether they're going to do it for all the grunts, I would assume so, but I just like it that they're still there kind of thing and I particularly like Team Aqua's one, even though I'm a Team Magma fanboy all day long, but I like Team Aqua's one. Next thing, oh there's one more thing, this is the part where I jump a little bit. This isn't until later on in the trailer, but later on you see a, uh, where was it? Where was it? It was at um, Slateport City when you are in the Aqua Marina and you're trying to track down Archie and he says they escaped for a submarine because they're on their way to the cave of origin I think that's right something like that they're on their way to revive like Kyogre slash Groudon and you see it the submarine is now a Sharpedo it's a Sharpedo submarine and it on the side you can clearly see it has the team aqua symbol just by the pod and like if you go like straight down from the hook I don't know whether this is confirming a Mega Sharpedo, but god damn it, I sure hope so. Because this pretty much cements that Sharpedo is like Team Aqua's mascot. There's nothing for this to show for Team Magma. Like, there's no like Camerupt air balloon or something, or Camerupt train, but this shows Team Aqua has a Sharpedo submarine, 
I feel like it was just worth mentioning because there's always so much talk going around about Mega Sharpedo and Mega Camerupt, and I really hope this is confirming a Mega Sharpedo. It's just something I wanted to throw in there. On a side note that has nothing to do with anything, look how friggin' tiny May is compared to that guy standing on the side. She is up to his waist. I don't know whether this is a giant hybrid man of like part man, part, don't know, gorilla, part giraffe maybe. But May is up to his freaking waist. I know these characters are 10 and this is a grown man, but 10 year olds are pretty fucking tall nowadays. Just in a, just a little side note there. So now that I've spoke about that, we're going to go on to what is probably the, uh, probably the main thing for this trailer, probably the thing that most people care about, which is the legendaries, of course. Now they start off with showing them in their normal forms. You see Groudon, arms out, looking like he's going to give you a hug. And, you know, he's summoning the sun. Pretty much to how you would remember in Pokemon Emerald or Pokemon Sapphire, Pokemon Ruby, whatever. It's arms out, summons the sun, makes the whole world dry. Similar to Kyogre. Arms out, also looking for a hug, making rain fall down. They show him in their normal forms. Their normal forms are confirmed. Their normal forms are in the game. They're not primal all the freaking time. So they're there. They show him in normal forms. You're going to see them in normal forms. You're going to interact with them in their normal forms in this in part of the game at some point. What really intrigues me is that when you are seeing them in the cave, they are primal evolving in the cave. There's no one else around, I assume. So their primal evolution is triggered by, not by a person, it seems. It seems like it's triggered by something they do. Maybe like a conscious decision by the Pokemon to actually primal evolve, revert back to a state. I also felt like pointing out that this is uh, more so you can notice it in the Kyogre screenshot that's on your screen now. Whenever you, everyone here who's watching this, I assume you know that when a Pokemon Mega evolves, they go into like a pinky slash purple circle and they explode out of it. What I am seeing here, or what you are seeing here as well, is Kyogre and Groudon when they primal evolve, it's not a circle, it's in a random shape that still encompasses the Pokemon, but there's all corners to it, it's all jagged, there's nothing symmetrical about it, it's all pointy and like just basically random. And I want to say, I, w I might be looking into it too much, but I feel like uh, it's a little bit of food for thought for you guys. We know that they're called Primal Evolutions, and it's called Primal Groudon and Primal Kyogre. Primal obviously means, you know, an older time, like prehistoric, more, most often associated with like dinosaurs kind of thing. As we all know, dinosaurs were not the smartest thing in the world. I feel like I may be looking into it too much again, but the fact that Mega Evolution is a perfect circle and Primal Evolution is so chaotic, I feel like it could mean that whenever they do their Primal Evolution, it just seems like it's not like, I don't know, it's like maybe symbolising that it's more dangerous because obviously corners are more dangerous than a just circle. It's a more dangerous form, but perhaps maybe it's less refined, like a less refined state of mind for the Pokemon. Perhaps they go, they get stronger for going back to their old ways, but perhaps they lose some of their intelligence. I don't know how far you can go with Pokemon intelligence, but I feel like maybe they would go back to maybe a basic primal form, like a certain, right, this is my enemy, gonna kill him, kind of thing. I feel like that would be very plausible in tying in with the story, that they would go back to a prehistoric form, they lose any form of like conscience because they're just back in a time of survival and they just want to survive, they're ready to destroy everything and make it how they think they want to see it. I may be looking into that completely too much, probably am, but I just feel like the fact that it's a completely different shape and it's such a chaotic shape that is going to be some form of like the Pokemon is losing some kind of state of mind and is getting a bit more wild kind of thing. And obviously after they Primal Evolve, there they are, they're in the cave, they look amazing and it's just your character standing in front of them. So they, they do it, you're there, they do it in front of you and you have to deal with it kind of thing. So this means you might have to try and catch them in their primal form, which would be the first instance of us actually having to battle a mega wild Pokemon, 
which love it absolutely love it Pokemon seems to be taking a lot of correct steps with this game they're doing a lot of first time things like this facing a wild Pokemon itself primal evolution is a complete new thing I f and they're building on things that we already had like gym leaders that people already know and a lot of people like these gym leaders I feel like Pokemon are making a lot of correct steps with this game and I personally am looking forward to seeing how this works out that it's just your character in the cave with the primal Pokemon and it seems like you have to battle them and I can't imagine they would they wouldn't give you the chance to actually catch them I can't imagine they wouldn't give you that chance so let's uh, move off of the primal Pokemon now I feel like I spoke about them enough next up in the trailer was some contest stuff and some secret base stuff uh, I'm not going to talk about that really because number one I didn't really like contests number two I didn't really like secret bases either to be honest and I looked at it I can't compare it to the old game because I never really looked into them in depth so I can't look for any comparisons but if you want to watch that part of the trailer go ahead it looks kind of cool I'll probably try the contest and give it another try secret bases was always a bit tedious to me what I really want to talk about and this is what has me most very most intrigued about the trailer and it's probably something that I don't know probably something that you guys a lot of you saw and thought huh that's cool but I saw it and I immediately thought like wow there is the screenshot on your screen now as you can see there is a Pikachu tail poking out of the grass and your character is sneaking towards it now before I talk about that I just want to mention at the top of the screen uh, you can see that there is long grass like the long grass where you couldn't ride your bike and stuff like that So I feel like that's easy to say confirmed long grass can't ride your bike through it kind of thing Maybe different kinds of Pokemon in the long grass and the short grass. I don't know, but i just want to say that for now What has me most intrigued here is? black and white introduced shaking grass if you went up and down next to the route or you ran around on the route long enough occasionally you'd see a patch of grass shaking around normally had an Ordino in it but it had a Pokemon that was rare to that route. As in, there was possibly maybe a chance of like 2% of finding that Pokemon on the route. X and Y didn't really include that into the game. They didn't include that feature, which I thought was quite a shame. Because I thought that was quite a nice feature. Not the fact that it was Ordinos and it just made it easy to grind. But just the fact that there was a way to get rarer Pokemon through a certain circumstance. And looking at this, I want to say, I want to say that this is Game Freak's way of bringing that feature back. I want to say that it's almost like you could be running around on the route, you find your Pokemon like normal, and then occasionally you'll see not necessarily a Pikachu tail, but maybe, maybe a Cubone like club, or maybe a, I don't know, what kind of Pokemon do you catch in a Mega Ruby, uh, in Ruby Sapphire? Uh... Tropius. Maybe you see like a Tropius fan. Like one of his blades that he uses to fly or something. Or maybe you see like... Maybe you see in the fiery path. Maybe you see like a little fire somewhere. And your character can then have the option to either run towards it as fast as you can. And possibly scare the Pokemon away. Or sneak towards it and like increase your chance of finding this rarer Pokemon. This is something that I'm very, very much interested in. Seeing a rarer Pokemon and having to sneak towards it to catch it. And I would also very much enjoy, please, Game Freak, if you're watching this and it's not implemented in the game already, please change it. I would very much enjoy, if this wasn't limited to just goddamn Pikachu like everything else is in the fucking game, I want this to be not just a Pikachu tail every time and it could end up being like a freaking... Arcanine, I want it to be specific to the Pokemon you can find. So if there's a rare chance of finding a Mighty Enna, then it's a Mighty Enna tail coming out. Or not necessarily a tail, but something. I want it to be Pokemon specific. I feel like this is something that people will enjoy if it's done correctly. Rare a Pokemon, sneaking towards them. I feel like it just opens up a new style of finding Pokemon and it could work all kinds of ways because you got to find a way of surfing so they could be like I don't know 
poking in and out of the water or something. There could be a way of doing it while you're diving and stuff like that. I don't know. But what I do know is that I am goddamn excited for this game. Thank you for watching this trailer analysis, guys. I hope I've given you something to think about, and I hope I've given you some interesting points, and I hope you enjoyed the video, most of all. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, leave a like. If you didn't enjoy it, leave a dislike. Let me know what you thought in the comments, and thank you for watching this video. I was Unlawful Exile, half of the pair of exiles. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you all next time. Take care. Bye-bye.